This tutorial is called Creating a Vector Travel Mug in Illustrator. For purposes of this tutorial, we will be using the Essentials workspace. Go to Window in the top menu, click on Workspace and choose Essentials. The panel should appear on your workspace on the right. These are the basic tools we might need and even though we won't be using most of them, it's a good habit to use a workspace where the tools are out of the way. Later on as you develop your skills you'll probably customize that area in your own way. Now we're ready to start recreating the mug in vectors. Go to the layers panel and create a new layer. Click on the toggles lock square to lock the layer that contains the photo of the mug. Select your pen tool. Go to the panels on the right again and select color. This opens the color panel. First let's get rid of any fill color which we don't need for now. Click on fill and below that click on none. Next click on stroke and in the color section choose something that will be easy to see against the background. I'm going to select the bright blue color. Use whatever works best for you. Now we're ready to start recreating the logo and vectors. Go to your ellipse tool. Create an ellipse along the outside rim of the lid. Copy this object, Control C, and paste in front, Control F. Move it down to the bottom of where the lid attaches to the mug. Using the selection tool, grab the object and stretch it to match the line in the photo. Go to the Rectangle tool. Create a rectangle from the outside edge of the top ellipse to the outside edge of the bottom ellipse. Go to Window in the top menu and select Pathfinder. Select the lower ellipse and the rectangle and on the Pathfinder palette click on Unite. This merges the two objects into one. Select the top ellipse and copy it. With it still selected, go to Object in the top menu, select Arrange and Bring to Front. Next, select both objects. On the Pathfinder panel, click on Minus Front. Paste in Front, Control F. Paste in Front, Control F again and move this ellipse down to the bottom of the black part of the mug. Use the selection tool to stretch the top or bottom so that it lines up with that part in the photo. Create another rectangle from the widest part of the lower ellipse to just above it. Select the rectangle and the lower ellipse and on the pathfinder click on Unite. Bring the middle of the three shapes that you've created to the front using the previous technique and copy it. Pull both sides in slightly. Select the middle and lower objects and on the Pathfinder panel click on minus front. Paste in front. Copy and paste the ellipse at the top and move it down to the base of the mug. Use the selection tool to fit it to the shape of the base. Using the pen tool, create an object from the base of the mug to the black lid section that looks something like this. Use the same pathfinder techniques that we used before to unite the bottom ellipse to this shape. Copy the shape above it and bring it to the front. Use the pathfinder to minus front that shape from the bottom of the mug. Paste in front the upper shape. Copy and paste in front the ellipse at the top. Use the direct selection tool to size it to fit the inner ridge of the lid. Paste in front again. Move this new ellipse to fit the lowest shape inside the lip of the mug. Copy this shape. Select both this object and the object representing the inner ridge of the lid. On the Pathfinder panel, click on Divide. 
ungroup these objects and delete the lower section. Paste in front another copy of the smaller ellipse and use the same process to create the next section of the inner lid. Using the same techniques create two more sections within the inner lid. Next, create the slider on the right side of the lid. With the pen tool, make an outline around the whole shape. Since this is so hard to see, you can do your own personal interpretation as to how you want this shape to look. Create this shape along the top of the previous one. It should extend above the slider. Copy the slider and select both objects. Use the Pathfinder Divide option. Ungroup the objects and delete the upper unwanted section. Create a smaller section within this object using the same technique. Next, make an outline around the entire shape at the top of the handle of the mug. This vector shape represents the sides of the upper handle, extended out from the previous shape. By now, you recognize that we extend it out so that you can use the Pathfinder tool and the Divide option to create our new object. Select both objects, click on Divide in the Pathfinder panel, ungroup, and delete the unwanted object. Use the same process to create this object. Create the lower part of the handle using the pen tool. Extend it into the two objects above it. Select the two objects above the one just created. Group them, copy them, and bring to front. Now with this object still selected, also select the bottom part of the handle. On the Pathfinder panel, click on Minus Front. Paste in front the grouped objects. Ungroup those objects. Create two more sections on the right of the lower part of the handle using the Pathfinder Divide tool as we did before. Next, create these two shapes on the left side of the handle in the same way. All of our shapes are created, and now is a good time to go back and fine tune everything and make sure the objects are aligned as you want them. Also add any additional objects that you think might enhance your vector design. Now it's time to color our art. For information on how to use the color tools, check out the tutorial called Coloring Vector Art in Illustrator. Click and drag to separate the color, swatches, stroke, and gradient panels from where they're docked on the right, and arrange them like so. Using the gradient tool, create a gradient that looks something like this. It's done in CMYK colors using different tints of black. The tints are 100%, 90%, 100%, 86%, and 100%. Color this object with a two color gradient from 85% to 100% black. Make this one 75% black to 100% black. Make this one 70% black to 90% black. 
This one is a three color gradient. It goes from 70% to 50% at 30 degree location to 90%. The very top of the lid is a three color gradient that goes from 90 to 30 to 90 at a 60 degree angle. These two also have the 90, 30 to 90 degree gradient, but the angle is zero degrees and the location of the middle is at 75%. These three objects are 95% black. These three are 70% black. The top of the handle is a 60% black. This object is 85% black. Make these two 90% black. These two objects are 80% black. For the bottom of the mug, use a five part gradient with these positions. The percentages are 10%, 60%, 25%, 30%, and 10%. Delete the layer with a photo. Select all of the objects, copy them, and give them no outline. Paste in front and give everything no fill and a 50% black stroke. Then you can go through your illustration and eliminate any outlines that you don't really need, such as inside the lid and on the grip of the handle. You can also send some of the strokes to the back to help with the final look of your vector art. Another technique that can be useful is to align stroke to outside or inside in the stroke panel. There's really no wrong way to do this. It's up to the artist to create the final look of the illustration. For a different way to create the silver bottom of this mug, check out the tutorial called Coloring with a Gradient Mesh in Illustrator. And thanks for watching.